Well, it looks like we've got a faulty alarm system box on this Toyota minivan here. Here's the box. This controls a remote control of unlocking and locking the doors, as you see the little antenna here. It also controls the alarm system, as well as several other things. If you look on the box at the right angle, door switch inputs, siren outputs, lots of inputs and outputs. Apparently, our conclusion is this box has gone bad, and that's what's keeping this van from starting. Our first thought was we had a bad starter, that's why it's jacked up so high, so we could easily work under here. And it's funny because the engine on this vehicle is underneath the vehicle, unlike most vehicles where it's up in the front. It's underneath, in the middle of the vehicle here. Right about there is where the exhaust manifold's at. Fuel tank. And the starter is right up under this front differential. It's a little hard to see in the slow light. That's where that's at. I had to take the front differential apart at the U-joint to get to the starter. We pulled it out and it turns out it works. So, we called up a dealer, told them what was going on. They said this box might be bad. So let me demonstrate the problem. Feels nice and high up in this van. <laughs> Wouldn't fit out of the garage like this. Okay, so here's what's going on. I've got that black box plugged back in. Everything's connected. Now, everything starts acting really weird. For instance, I'm going to unlock the doors. And they lock. When the red disappears, that means they lock. Now I'm going to try to lock the doors and they unlock. I'm gonna hit unlock and I'm gonna hit lock. So that's really messed up. Now if we take the handy dandy little nifty key here, stick it in the ignition. Ultimately the biggest problem is though, watch what happens when I try to start the vehicle. What happened was, when this vehicle was attempted uh, to start earlier, the battery cables were either loose or something was going on, or this was starting to act up before then. So I had the driver pop the hood. What happened was, she had locked the doors though. And when she popped the hood, that set off the alarm, which also cuts the circuit to the starter. And that's part of that black box down there. Now when I try to start it, nothing. Starter's right below me there. You can see the floor through there. That's where the starter's down there, and you can't even hear any clicking. Other than the ignition key. Other things were acting up, such as when I hit the brakes, the locks would start going crazy. Horn still works. But, ultimately, we came to the decision that the box was messed up, mainly when we did this. Okay, now I have the black box out. So that all the security and anti-theft system is disabled. All right, now we're gonna try to start up the vehicle. I don't have the front dash on here because I had to get to that box. We get fuel, but no spark. So apparently there's some circuit that has to be completed with this box. However, the box is keeping the starter from turning over at all, and you get the problem that we have now. Let you take a look at the engine here. What little you can see of it. Oh, it's cranking. If we go back to the around the tailpipe here and smell around, you can smell gas. So it's getting gas, and it's if we keep doing that much longer, it'll start flooding out. So that's the problem that we're having now. I don't know how common this is, but for those of you who might happen to watch this video and see what's going on, 
you'll have a general idea of what to do. You can dry one more time here, even when you give it gas. So you can see the throttle right here. So, bottom line is we must not be getting spark. It has to do with the circuit not being completed on the sparks. So it's going to have to be replaced. On second thought, let's not replace that box. So I took this box up to a Toyota dealer and he said it was an aftermarket modification. It was going to cost about 300 bucks to replace. I thought, whoa, let's do a little bit more troubleshooting and diagnosing before we go doing that. So, as you can see right here, this is where the box came out of. This cord, which goes to the siren as well, was also unplugged. And this is the ABS brake box. There's a couple other boxes up in here that are for the electronics and uh, fuel pump and all that different stuff. But, here's the important part. If we look on this box here, on the back you'll see where's y yellow. There it is yellow switched 12 volt whoop get the light here yellow switch 12 volt ignition input okay so that's where the power's coming from is this yellow wire right here now what I did is I took this yellow wire and I started completing different circuits while attempting to start the vehicle just as hope was about to run out I got to the second to last one here and it started right up so again, here's if this wire was to be pulled out, watch what happens. Nothing. Now, when we plug this wire back in, watch what happens. Sweet! Oh yes! So, if you have this problem, it's just a simple circuit that has to be completed. Forget this. Alright, we've got it running. There's the exhaust manifold. Nice and smooth engine. Little inline four. Pop the hood. I haven't gotten the rest of this constant stuff back on yet. There we go the siren disconnected and also put duct tape over it so it wouldn't blare right in our ears when we were messing with the battery. That ABS light was on before we started having this problem so that doesn't have anything to do with what's going on now. Parking brakes on this side here. Hey we're moving. Yes.